The Chuck E. Cheese restaurants have been an icon for over 40 years, whether for its characters and shows, or its games and food. Regardless of what you think of the character or his chains, Chuck E. Cheese touches everyone who grew up with it, even collectors. Now, it shouldn't come as a surprise that there are general CEC collectors out there, as I'm one of them, but something in particular that a lot of people want to get their hands on after enjoying their time at Chuck E. Cheese is merchandise of their favorite characters from the show. For example, ever since I became a Pasquale worshipper, I decided I wanted some of his older toys that came out from the past. When doing more research on the topic of Chuck E. Cheese toys, I discovered that there's a lot of lore regarding what I was finding, and it would be fun to take a trip back in time and discover what merchandise was released for the characters. However, not every piece of Chuck E. Cheese memorabilia ever gets talked about or ever surfaced online, leading to some of them being labeled as undocumented. In this video, I'll be taking a look at some rare Chuck E. Cheese plushes, and as a bonus, I'll also be taking a look at a canceled one as well. Enjoy. That song is making me very dizzy. You want a more traditional approach, Big C? I certainly do, yes. Like what? Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater opened on May 17, 1977 in San Jose's Winchester Boulevard in California. Their mascot, full name Charles Entertainment Cheese, was introduced as the main antagonist of the animatronic portrait shows. Chuck E. Cheese got his first plush back in 1978, made by the Dakin Company. Now, this is one of the most scarce plush of the character that's out there, so I doubt you'll ever see this guy frequently on eBay. The only sizes that are confirmed to exist are the small 12-inch scale and the medium 16-inch scale. Not so sure if these are the only sizes Dakin made, however, the only other character Dakin made outside of the Big C was Mr. Munch. Mr. Munch was a new addition to the Pizza Time players in late 1978, so it made sense that Munch got a plush at the time. Though I imagine that Munch came out a year after Chucky released. Chuck was released in 1978, and since Munch was introduced around the same year, I like to believe that he came out in 1979, since I don't think that toys of Munch were ever developed before the second store opened. As for both characters, they look really good. All of Chucky's details are made of felt material. I'm surprised they haven't been lost after 40 years of existing. While not the best plush of Classic Chuck, he is a really good one. In fact, there is another Chuck E. Cheese plush that looks similar to this one. He was released in the 1980s by the Oriental Trading Company. The patterns look similar, and their details are all made of felt. Mr. Munch also looks great as well, pretty accurate to Mr. Munch's classic design, albeit his nostrils are incorrectly colored pink instead of yellow. Not so sure if Munch was in multiple sizes like Big C was, but I'm assuming that he was. Such a shame that Dakin only made Chucky and Munch. While it is possible that they might have made a Jasper, a Pasquale, or dare I say a Krusty the Cat, but I personally believe that they only made Munch and Big C. I would love to get my hands on both plushes if I ever in a billion years see them on eBay. Well, I was very shocked to find out that one popped up on eBay and was sold as recently as September of 2019. It was sold for a very clean $100 price. The stars at night are big and bright Deep in the heart of Texas The prairie sky is wide and high Deep in the heart of Texas Dolly Dimples is an interesting character. She was Pizza Time Theaters' first standalone side act and was usually located in the piano bar lounge. She was designed to entertain parents as the content in her show tapes contained some innuendos and some content that I highly doubt CC could get away with nowadays. Only two show tapes of her were made and she probably has the most amount of merchandise out of any character who isn't a Pizza Time player. While checking Worth Point, I was shocked to find an old listing of a lot containing an ugly looking but very common Munch plush and a Dolly plush? I was shocked that she even got a plush, as I never knew that listing existed before. This is the only listing of her I could find, which was sourced from eBay. The sold date says that the lot was purchased on June 10th, 2007, which is very old, meaning that no other Dolly plush has ever shown up for around 12 years. So the big question is, who bought it? Well, it is none other than one of the most popular Chuck E. Cheese collectors, Michael Scherpenberg, aka Captain Slappy. In one of his Instagram posts, he showed off a photo of his Harmony animatronic. 
To the left is his plush collection, showing off the Dolly plush as well as some other CEC plushes, including some generic crow stuffed animals and a custom plush of Harmony Howlett. I asked if he could show us those three plushes, and he agreed to do so. I had somebody uh, post a comment a couple days ago on Instagram asking about a couple of the plushes they saw in one of the pictures, so... Yeah, it's a Saturday night, and I don't have anything to do, so I figured I'd uh, kind of show some of these closer detail. This is Dolly Dimples. She's done in the style of the original 1978, uh, the one that appeared in the first store. I don't know the story behind her. She does look authentic. Um, kind of see her tag there. There's not a date on it, but it is... It does look very authentic, both in the way they did it and the material they used, since it looks like the original Dolly Dress. And there's her name in Copyright Pizza Time Theater. So I'm going to guess this is probably uh, very early 80s. Probably, actually, probably more like late 70s when they first introduced the character. Now, keep in mind, I went to Chuck E. Cheese in 1981. Aside from her dress being a little too short, this is a really good plush of the character. My bad is that she was released in the early 80s by California Stuffed Toys, who also made plushes of Munch, Jasper, and the Big C. Their plushes were made only in the small 9-inch and the medium 16-inch scale. The dolly shown here is in the small scale. Slappy himself never saw her at any Chuck E. Cheese store, even though he's been going to his Chuck E. Cheese store since 1981. He either thinks that this plush could be a prototype, or something that franchise owners got. First off, I don't believe that it's a prototype, because if it was, the touch tag would have said that it's like a sample plush. The touch tag is in the same style as the other characters in the set. So I personally believe that, yes, it was a release plush, and that it's so hard to find for some reason. Again, this would be a plush I would love to get in the medium scale, if she ever shows up again. If there's anything prominent with Chuck E. Cheese's is that there's not a lot of international locations out there. The chains have remained, for the most part, exclusive to the United States and Canada. But some international locations do exist, like the infamous Guatemala City Store. I was disappointed that there weren't any Chuck E. Cheese's in Australia. At least not today. What if I told you that one did exist at the time? In the early 80s, there used to be a Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater in Australia and closed probably sometime during Pizza Town Theaters' bankruptcy from 1984 to 1985. The place was renamed to Charlie Cheese's Pizza Playhouse due to cultural reasons. This well-known piece of CEC history is very interesting and very scarce. I was surprised that merchandise for Charlie Cheese's surfaced online after all these years, one of them being this plush. This photo was originally posted on ShowbizPizza.com's Facebook account. More images started showing up online, and two of them even appeared when I attended ChuckyCon. He's definitely different compared to the American ones, and he looks interesting. I really like the way he looks. His bowler hat says the character's his name and doesn't have any pink on his soles. His bow tie is red instead of black, and while he lacks buttons and his buck teeth, he does have his whiskers and a tail. I also find it interesting that they made his ears pink and his muzzle a light gray color. He actually looks like a precursor to Rockstar Chuck. I also find it strange that he has Velcro in his paws. What are they used for? In fact, I have more questions than that. Did they come in a different size? Was he part of a plush set with other characters? We may never know until some random guy online confirms it. This is an interesting piece of Chuggy Cheese history because it's a remnant of something that no longer exists internationally. Apparently, Avenger Chuck has a dog named Pepperoni. I couldn't find any pictures of Pepperoni, so the only surviving evidence of his existence right now are two pictures of the plush on ShowbizPizza.com's collectible museum. One were his first orange, and a tie-dye variant were his first green and yellow. Both were released by Dennis Fullen Inc. in the year 2000. I never saw any eBay listings of him, not even more photos of those plushes. I emailed the website's owner asking him if he has any additional photos or the existing ones in high quality, however I have yet to get a response from him. It will take a tiny miracle to ever get more information on these two plushes, 
which is why Pepperoni is present in this video. There is a brotherhood of man, a benevolent brotherhood of man. While making the Pasquale plush video, I did some research on Worth Point. For some reason, I completely did not know there was another Pasquale plush. It was made by Dennis Follin and is part of the Chuck E. Cheese plush set from 1994. This is the only listing of him that I could find on Worth Point, and no additional photos exist outside of this listing. The date he was purchased was as recent as 2018, meaning that he may pop up again in the future. After so long, he finally appeared on eBay, but why though? I'm just gonna assume that he was just hard to find, that's all. And he's definitely not a prototype since he has an official touch tag. I remember in the Pasquale plush video where I basically talked about how I thought the 1996 plush was meh and how atrocious the 1998 plush was. As for the 1994 plush, it, it's surprisingly great. It uses the exact same pattern as the 1992 plush, but with some slight differences. His plastic eyes are a different mold, not to mention some of the materials look different. He was only made in the 9 inch scale which makes sense as no other characters in the 1994 set have medium or large size plushes. Since I have a goal to collect every single Pasquale plush that has been released, I would love to get my hands on this guy. Again, I personally don't believe this plush is a prototype, but this is... In the Pasquale plush video I made, I mentioned how he's the only plush in the 1996 plush set not to be in the large 21 inch scale. He only came in the small and medium scale. After the video was uploaded, I got a comment claiming that one does exist and that his old colleague owned one but it was a sample. Months after the comment was posted, I was able to get in touch with the users' his old colleague. It was none other than CCTV Spotlight who runs CEC Show Tape Archive. He made a story on his Instagram mentioning the plush, as well as providing two pictures of him. He claims that his touch tag says sample, confirming that yes, he's indeed an authentic prototype. He also said that it was never mass produced, meaning that not only is he a prototype of Squally plush, but he was also cancelled. These photos you are looking at on screen are taken by CCTV Spotlight himself, and sent them to me so that way we can get a better look at what he looks like. Even though I'm not a big fan of the 1996 Pasquale plush, he's actually not that bad. Not only does his mustache look accurate, as well as not having too much hair, but he also has his mouth more noticeable, unlike the final releases of the small and medium plushes. He does have the same problems as the smaller ones do, like the short apron and the broad shoulders, but he also has one flaw unique to this plush. His eyes are different compared to the smaller ones. They seem to have been made out of paper instead of plastic. They don't even have the black eyelids. The reason why I find this a flaw is because he looks so weird without eyebrows. The released Pasquale plushes have black eyelids in the plastic eyes. That also works as his eyebrows. But since this prototype is missing those, it kind of makes him look off. His shirt looks pink instead of red, whether it, it was intentional or the colors were just faded from the sun. He is still a decent plush nevertheless, and possibly a big improvement over the smaller plushes. I am really glad that this guy was saved, unlike the original Pasquale animatronic. In case if you don't know what usually happens to prototypes, well it's not a good story, I'll tell you that. While some prototypes do get saved by either the employees who worked online or the factory that made them, other times prototypes would get destroyed. Imagine seeing this plush at a factory being ripped to pieces, having his eyes plucked out, and having his material reused for something that isn't him. I'm glad this plush was saved and taken care of, otherwise he would have met the same fate as the other prototypes. Why he was never released though, we may never know. CCTV Spotlight thinks that he probably wouldn't sell well, which I think makes sense because he is a large plush, standing at around 21 inches tall. I imagine that the larger plushes don't sell as well as the smaller ones, which is why few of them are made compared to the smaller ones. I'm pretty sure most people who are going for these plushes aren't getting them simply for a collection, but rather to play with them. As cool as having a 21 inch Pasquale plush would be, it's not that practical. It would take up a lot of space and it would be hard to play with, so I'm actually not that heartbroken that this guy wasn't released. But hey, at least an unreleased Pasquale item exists. And there you have it. 
we looked at a total of eight plushes, not counting the various sizes. It's so fascinating that these rare plushes have such interesting stories behind them. If you know any rare or canceled Chuck E. Cheese plushes that I haven't mentioned before, please let me know in the comments below, and if there's a few of that I missed, I'll probably make a part two. Thank you for watching, until next time, say no to drugs, say yes to Pasquale.